Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to be walking through Cisco Packet Tracer 11.2.2.5, titled Configuring Dynamic NAT. So to begin, we'll go ahead and get our Packet Tracer activity opened up here. <laughs> Even after a reset, it looks like we're going to be sit starting at 25% completed. So. this activity, we want to configure dynamic NAT and then verify that it is working. Um, it doesn't really give a lot of background or anything, so we're just going to go ahead and jump right into it. Starting with router 2. We'll come into the command line interface. So we want to configure one statement for ACL1 to permit any address belonging to the 172.16.0.0 slash 16 network. So we'll come up to the global configuration mode and we'll go ahead and create an access list. Call it access list 1, permit anything from this network with a wildcard mask. And then we want to configure a pool of addresses for NAT. So we'll go ahead, IP NAT pool, uh, call it ISP, 209.165.76.196 through 209.165.76.199. Two five five two five five two five five two five two. I guess we want to put an AT, not an OT. Try that again. There we go. Um, it does have a note here. Notice that in the topology. There we go. There are three network ranges that would be translated based on the ACL that we just created. So we've got one here, one here, and one here. So what would happen if more than two devices tried to access the internet at the same time? Um, well, the first two devices would get access, and then any additional device would be denied access until one of the previous two translations timed out. Um, those first two that connect would use both of our NAT addresses that are available to us, and so nothing else would be able to get NAT, so nothing else would be able to be translated for internet access until one of those first two timed out. So step three, we want to associate the ACL that we created with the NAT pool that we created. So come back into R2 and we'll give it the command IP NAT inside source list one pool ISP. So this tells it that you can translate the inside sources from our ACL from list one. You can translate them into an IP, a public IP address from this pool named ISP which we named right here. Alright, next we need to let it know which side is the public side and which side is the private side on itself. So we have public is 0000, private is 001. So go ahead and give it the commands to let it know which is which. And that should be set up. So now we should have access from any device here to that server. So let's go ahead and test from the laptop first. Let's just go straight to the web browser. 
and we want to connect to that server. And there we go, so we have access with the laptop. How about our first PC? PC has access to that web server. And so our second PC here will end up timing out. And so that's exactly what we were expecting to see happen. When we gave it this range with this mask, there's only four IP addresses in this entire network here. And so our first one is the network address, and our last one's the broadcast address. So it really only leaves the two in between for devices for NAT. So only two devices at a time can get translated for internet access. So when we connected with laptop one to the server, that used our first IP address, our first translation address. And then our PC1 came and connected to the server, and that used our second NAT translation. So they're both being used before PC2 tried to connect. So PC2 is unable to get a translated address. So PC2 can't access the internet. And that is exactly what we'd expect to see here. So let's go ahead and give a show IP NAT translations. And we should see laptop and PC1 have both been translated for HTTP access. All right. Um, it looks like that covers everything for this video. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them for me below. And I hope to see you in my next video. Um, I think at this point it might be a while before I come out with another video. But stay tuned. I will be back.